Nick Wiltgen published November 1, 2017 Although we're entering the last month of the official Atlantic hurricane season, there have been numerous past hurricanes that have changed lives and coastlines over the years in November. More November Atlantic Hurricane Outlook Hurricane Central Since 1950, there have been 36 November named Atlantic Basin storms, 21 of which have become hurricanes. Based on this history, you can expect one named storm every other November, and one November hurricane roughly every three years. Here are the five most notable Atlantic November hurricanes in recent times. Auto 2016 Auto first formed on November 20, 2016 in the extreme southwest Caribbean Sea. After meandering nearly in place, Auto rapidly gained strength as a hurricane on November 23rd, and detained Category 3 status the following day. Auto quickly made landfall in deep southern Nicaragua just a dozen miles north of the Costa Rica border during America's Thanksgiving holiday just hours after reaching peak intensity. Auto was the record latest in season Atlantic Basin hurricane landfall since at least 1851, and it took a strange path westward through Nicaragua and Costa Rica into the eastern Pacific. This landfall in Central America was also the farthest south and Atlantic Basin landfall has taken place on record. Auto continued southwestward in the far eastern Pacific for a couple of days until environmental conditions caused Auto to weaken. Track history for Hurricane Auto in 2017, including its crossover into the eastern Pacific. For more records from this historic hurricane, see our full recap. More the record latest U.S. hurricane and major hurricane landfalls Ida 2009 A nor'easter spawned by the remnants of Hurricane Ida batters South Nags Head, N.C., on November 13, 2009. Image credit eyewitness weather Kvino Ida formed on November 4 and 1st made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane on the Caribbean coast of Nicaragua after passing near the Corn Islands. It weakened to a depression before re-emerging over the Caribbean Sea, eventually peaking as a Category 2 hurricane over the Yucatan Channel on November 8 with 105 miles per hour winds. Ida moved north into the Gulf of Mexico and became a post-tropical storm shortly before reaching the Alabama coast on November 10. Two days later, the remnants of Ida had transformed into a powerful non-tropical low-pressure center near the coast of the Carolinas. The Weather Channel dubbed the Storm Norda, a combination of the term Nor'easter and Ida, track history for Hurricane Ida, including its post-tropical phase near the southeastern United States. This new, fairly strong non-tropical low caused far more problems for the U.S. than the original tropical cyclone did. It stalled near the Outer Banks before slowly drifting east. This, combined with strong high pressure over New England, created a prolonged period of onshore winds across much of the Mid-Atlantic region. Three years before Superstorm Sandy, Norda did an estimated $180 million in damage to towns along the New Jersey shore. Delaware was also hard hit as the storm carried away at least 4 million cubic yards of sand. The Hampton Roads area around Norfolk, Virginia, experienced serious coastal flooding from storm surge, freshwater flooding from up to 18 inches of rain, and strong damaging wind gusts to 75 miles per hour. Closer to the center of Norda, the Outer Banks took a hammering with locally a foot of rain and relentless coastal flooding that led to the closure of Highway 12. That road was temporarily buried under feet of sand. Paloma 2008 Damage from Hurricane Paloma on the island of Cayman Bracasin on November 14, 2008. Image credit weather underground Mangrove Man Hurricane Paloma was the second strongest November Atlantic Basin hurricane on record. As many November tropical cyclones do, it formed in the Caribbean Sea. Disturbed weather in the southwest Caribbean November 1st gradually coalesced into a depression November 5th southeast of the Honduras-Nicaragua border. Paloma eventually moved into a very favorable environment of high sea surface temperatures and diverging winds aloft, both of which encouraged powerful thunderstorms to organize around its core. Track history for Hurricane Paloma by the time it grazed Little Cayman and Cayman Brack, Paloma had rapidly intensified into a Category 4 hurricane with maximum sustained winds reaching 145 miles per hour on the morning of November 8. Practically every structure on Cayman Brack was destroyed, but fortunately nobody was reported hurt. Paloma made landfall near Santa Cruz del Sur, Cuba, as a Category 2 storm with 100 miles per hour winds later that evening 1,453 homes were destroyed and 12,159 damaged according to the Cuban government. Paloma rapidly weakened to a depression the next day as land interaction and unfavorable winds aloft ripped it apart. Paloma limped past the northern coast of Cuba before doing a U-turn, returning to the Caribbean, and then swinging northwestward into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, eventually bringing some heavy rain to parts of Florida as a remnant low. 
More six things you might see in November's weather Lenny 1999 Visible satellite image of Hurricane Lenny on November 17, 1999. Image credit National Weather Service, San Juan, PR Lenny is the most powerful Atlantic basin hurricane in the satellite area in the month of November. But Lenny is also remembered for its unusual movement. Most tropical storms and hurricanes take a general east to west path through the Caribbean Sea, but not Lenny. Lenny formed as a typical November tropical depression in the Western Caribbean on November 13. But instead of being pulled north or northwest, it immediately began moving toward the east, and more or less stayed on this trajectory for its entire life with some slight jogs. Hurricane Lenny took an unprecedented eastward path through the Caribbean in November 1999. In its official report on Lenny, the National Hurricane Center said this long west-to-east -east track through the Caribbean was unprecedented in the 113-year Atlantic Basin tropical cyclone record. Unfortunately, one of those jogs in the path took Lenny directly into the northern Lesser Antilles November 17 at its peak intensity of 155 miles per hour, a high-end Category 4 storm. While those maximum winds occurred over water, the storm still battered the Virgin Islands, including a 112 miles per hour gust on St. Croix. Damaging winds also struck Anguilla, St. Lucia, St. Martins, Martin, Guadeloupe, Saba, Granada, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Storm surge and damaging waves affected many of these areas as well. Fortunately, Lenny weakened significantly during its slow push through the islands, diminishing to tropical storm status before moving east of the Antilles. In all, 17 people died as a direct result of Lenny, which did an estimated $330 million in damage in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands alone. Lenny eventually dissipated about 700 miles east of the Leeward Islands on November 23. Because of Lenny's destruction, its name was retired and replaced with Lee on the 2005 naming list. Kate 1985 Visible satellite image of Hurricane Kate near its peak intensity in the eastern Gulf of Mexico on November 20, 1985. Cuba is visible on the lower right. Image credit NOAA No other hurricane in modern record-keeping has made landfall on the U.S. mainland later than Hurricane Kate. Unlike the other cyclones on this list, Kate formed over the Atlantic Ocean, less than 200 miles north of the Virgin Islands. After forming as a tropical storm on November, 15. It became a hurricane the next day, and remained one until landfall. Kate moved through the southeastern Bahamas as a Category 1 hurricane on the night of November 17-18. It then grazed the northern coast of Cuba on November 19, producing gusts as high as 105 miles per hour. Even that passage overland didnt put much of a dent in Kate, and it remained a hurricane as it emerged into the Florida Straits, passing within 85 miles of Key West where official gusts reached 69 miles per hour. As Kate curved northwest into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, it intensified even further, becoming a Category 3 hurricane, with top sustained winds estimated at 120 miles per hour. Track history for Hurricane Kate in 1985 Kate approached the Florida Panhandle, where it made landfall near Mexico Beach on November 21, just one week before Thanksgiving, with maximum sustained winds of 100 miles per hour. It was the sixth hurricane to make landfall on the U.S. mainland in 1985. The storm felled many trees, causing extensive power outages in the Tallahassee area. Storm surge reached 11 feet at Cape San Blas. One of Kate's biggest impacts was on the local oyster industry near Apalachicola, FLA. The oyster beds were severely damaged by Hurricane Elena's close approach earlier in the season, and Kate destroyed what little was left. Many local oystermen lost their jobs. Inland, rain-related flooding from Kate damaged the cotton, soybean, and pecan crops in South Georgia. Spotty power outages and flash flooding extended northeast into the Carolinas as Kate moved northeast and weakened. The weather company's primary journalistic mission is to report on breaking weather news, the environment and the importance of science to our lives. This story does not necessarily represent the position of our parent company, IBM.